Now let's play a bit with Postgres. In order to do that, we need to log into Postgres. How can we do that? So the idea is that we run Postgres, the Postgres image, but well, the, the, the standard Postgres image is based on a rather uh, big container image. And luckily it also contains the PSQL command line utility. So if you are a bit familiar with PS uh, with the PSQL Postgres command line utility, you know that you can pass it a host and a username and you also have to provide a password. So we'll put it together into a rather lengthy uh, command line command, which will be cubed cuddle run a container named Postgres interactive mode with a TTY using the image Postgres 12.2. Well, we don't want to restart it. And we want to create an environment variable. Uh, well, you could, you know, uh, temper with uh, secrets here, but I mean, in this case, I'm using the password. For production use, it's not wise to use a, p uh, a password. Um, in a command line because then you'll have it in a command line utility, uh, a command line history, and you'll have to delete the history then, which is not what you want. So um, there are alternatives to that. But the for, for us here is okay, good enough. Postgres, um, a command line utility, the host we are using is basically the, um, the DNS entry we've created earlier. And the user, the standard user for the Postgres database is Postgres. So we are now connected from the pod named PGPSQL with our stateful set. Uh, to be precise, most likely we are going to be connected with the first node, I suppose. So the one that resolved first because we still have three replica sets. All right, uh, uh, three replicas. So we could, just to be a bit mean, scale down the replica set, which you can see now is terminating the pods in reverse sequence, stateful set two, stateful set one. And if it didn't connect, if the uh, the PSQL container didn't connect to the first node, we know because then obviously the connection will fail. And let's give it a try. This looks good. so it resolved to the first node, the first node still exists. Now the stateful set has only one node. So scaling out, scaling down, easy. But in case of Postgres, in order to make sense of the cluster, in order to deal with uh, a leader election, you'll have to add a lot more brain and thoughts and problem solving and, and architecture and cluster monitoring and setting up the replication. But Kubernetes provides you with all the means necessary in the sense that, you st well, you still have to get a cluster manager, you still have to do a lot of things for Postgres specifics, but you know, the orchestration of the stateful set, Kubernetes provides you with all the means. All right. So here's uh, how the uh, how the DNS entry is is built up. It's service name namespace dot service dot internal cluster default name, which in our case is cluster dot local. So the list of the database we've uh, seen that there's a Postgres database, which would be the primary database to use. So we say let's use that database. We are now connected to the database with the user. 
Postgres. So let's create a table. Let's create it's a, a, a table called company with a primary key and a name. So what we'll do is we'll insert a company into it and it's called N9's GMBH, which is my company. Bit of um, self-promotion here. All right, so we can uh, quit Postgres as we've done our job. Uh, and we are now deleting the pod PSQL. Let's poke the stateful set. So we've created stateful set. Let's, let's um, disturb it a bit. So here we have the pods of the stateful set. And what we now do is we kill the pod of the stateful set which is where the database is running. So uh, let's observe what's happening. There's a new container being created immediately. And it's running again, which means that in less than a minute, maybe in less than 30 seconds, I don't know, I didn't, didn't count the seconds, but uh, we've recovered a failed database. So it would be interesting to see um, whether our data is still there. So let's uh, log into uh, the database again. Let's use the Postgres. And our data is still there. I just found a little spelling mistake here. All right, so as we can see, um, the persistent volume uh, stored the data of the Postgres database. The Postgres database process is running in a container. If we delete the pod or if the pod dies or if the node where the pod is running dies, Kubernetes will automatically schedule a replacement of the pod. It will have the same identity. It will get the same disk with the same data so that after the resurrection of the pod, the recreation, so to say, the data will be there. Which means that even with a single database instance, with a single pod, we do have self-healing. I wouldn't call it, uh, I wouldn't call it high availability because if your entire availability zone dies, uh, then you probably your storage will be affected too or is unavailable due to network failure or uh, electricity. So if you, under, if you, if you go deeper into uh, the data centers, you will see they are structured usually into availability zones. They'll have a separate internet connections, separate store, uh, um, uh, air conditioning, a separate power supply, separate battery backup units, separate diesel engines for each availability zone, at least if it's appropriately tiered with redundancy. And um, so the self-healing won't help you if, uh, if, all your if your database is running in uh, a network segment that is entirely dead. If you have three replicas and each replica runs in its own availability zone, then you'd survive a failure of the availability zone. So the container behavior here helps you to get a better availability of your Postgres already by the self-healing capabilities of containers and Kubernetes, but it may not be sufficient for full productive use in, um, in a, you know, very important, for a very important application.